Om Shri Sai Ram. I offer my most humble pranams at Bhagwan's lotus feet. Dearest Swami, respected elders, dear brothers and sisters, what a beautiful day this is. So significant at an individual level, at a societal level, at the national level, and of course at the cosmic level. Today is the Independence Day in Malaysia. And I think that we have been blessed to celebrate it in a very unique manner. On one Independence Day in India, back in 2004, we were going to put up a drama in Swami's presence. And uh, Swami gave an understanding of Independence Day, which is very unique and which is so profound. In Sanskrit, the term used for independence is Swarajya, Swarajya Divas. Swami said Swa stands for Atma and Rajya means rule. And Swami said, true independence is when you allow the Atma to rule, not get swayed by body and mind. And then the beautiful punchline, what is Independence Day? When your dependence is on what is inside. That is independent. You are independent when you are dependent on what is within. And we are here focusing on becoming dependent on what is within each and every one of us. The seat of Swami, our heart. And that's why I say it is not a coincidence that we are beginning this beautiful convention on the Independence Day because we want to move from physical and political independence to true independence, which is Swarajya. The day is also special because if I can uh, briefly quote, not quote, actually state Swami's words from his discourse on the 7th of March, 1997. Swami says, what is a true day? A true day is when good people gather to focus on God or when a family lives in harmony and fraternity or when hospitality is extended to guests or when the needy people are helped, then only it's a true day. Otherwise, it is as good as a funeral day, Swami says. And I was thinking that on this day, we are ticking off most of those boxes. Good people have gathered to focus on God. As a family, we have come together to fraternize. Hospitality is being extended to guests. Oh God, ask me. I feel so touched, honored and humbled, you know, I'd been to the Batu Caves, saw Lord Murga, saw Lord Sri Rama, Tiruvalluvar, but I also saw a lot of monkeys. Now these monkeys are given so much respect and regard. People are feeding them, giving them drink, giving them everything. Normally, you know, recently in our building back in Bangalore, we had what they call monkey menace. Monkeys coming and stealing things from the garden, from the kitchen. So a lot of things are being done to scare away these monkeys. So when a monkey comes near, you take a stick and you beat it. I was thinking, what is the difference between the Indian monkey and the Malaysian monkey? Because, <laughs> because the Malaysian monkey is being fed, is being given drink. There, the Indian monkey is being chased. It is not a difference in Indian or Malaysian. It is a difference in the association. Here, the monkey is with God. So, we respect and regard. We consider it Hanuman. There, the monkey is not with God. We throw sticks and stones. I too feel the same way. I am not in any way special. It is Swami's grace. Stand beside the Lord. A monkey becomes Hanuman and that is the grace of Swami on all of us and that is why I am not saying that 
for Swami's sake, we should stand with him for our own sake. We sanctify our lives if we are able to stand with Swami. Our monkey minds become Hanumans. Swami says, Mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayo. The mind is responsible for bondage and liberation. Bondage is because of the monkey mind. That same monkey mind with Swami becomes Hanuman, who is so great that when Swami constructed the Satyasai Vidyagiri Stadium, all the gods were placed in the middle. Shiva, Jesus, Zorashtra, Buddha, everyone. Shiva, uh, Krishna. But Hanuman was placed on top. Just as the Lord, just as the devotee places the Lord on top, for the Lord, the devotee is on top. So this is indeed a very beautiful day. I am very blessed. I am very humbled. I am grateful to Swami, to Swami's instruments who have given me this opportunity. Coming to the topic, love is my form, truth is my breath. I was just wondering what to speak on these two lines, which are the opening two lines of a song that Swami sings to define himself. Love is my form, truth is my breath, Swami says. Interestingly, this song was actually composed by a Westerner, a devotee, who was inspired. Look at the humility of the Lord. Swami said, I like this song, I am going to take it. Yes, please Swami. The humility of the Lord. This touches me so many times, you know. Swami speaking about his childhood on one occasion. I am just taking a small detour to talk about the humility of the Lord. Swami speaking about his childhood, the difficult times he had. When he walked more than 10 kilometers because he didn't want to borrow money, he didn't want to accept, he didn't even ask. His friends came and gave him unasked, but no, no, no. He said, no, the moment material things come, divinity goes away. So he didn't, he walked all the way. He didn't have money to buy food or water, so he drank from the trough where cattle and buffaloes, they would be drinking water from there, he drank the water. That kind, you know, but he has to survive right so he had sold away his class textbooks and gotten some money that money also was stolen and he says night where he slept he found one packet of beads which is the indian local cigarettes and one ana coin and swami says i took that bd and broke it tore it into 100 shreds and buried it in the ground and when swami would speak in the discourse you could see the disgust on your face on his face you know smoking smoking drinking non vegetarian food swami in one birthday discourse says you tell your sai devotee sai devotee here you tell sai ram sai ram and there you cut chicken and eat what is this swami said like that and swami said if you want to give swami a birthday gift give up these three Smoking, drinking and non-vegetarian food. I know there will be a lot of discussion, debate. This protein, this is not available in this and you know, after all it's one cigarette, you know, one is bad, two, it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality. A few students, not students actually, a few youngsters from London had come to visit Swami and they were newspaper delivery boys. They were so inspired by Swami, they wanted to come to Swami. They had saved for a year and they had arrived. When they had come, Swami came for darshan. Swami suddenly saw this group of boys and he went and blessed them. He saw that all of them, right, had long hair. <laughs> and Swami said, long hair, mm, never mind, leave it. Swami, what? No, 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 nothing. Swami, tell Swami. Uh, no, no, no. If you were my boys, I would have told, cut your hair, but it's okay. <laughs> That's what Swami said. And Swami moved on. Next day when Swami comes for darshan, he sees in that section, 15, 20 bald heads, clean shaven. And Swami is like, hey, what happened? You know, he goes and almost embraces them. Hey, what happened? I, what? Like, he, Swami is not able to express. And they say, Swami, you said, if you were my boys, I mean, please don't tell that. We are your boys. Never bring an if between you and your boys. We are your boys. Why our hair will cut our head if needed, Swami, for you? But don't tell if you were my students. I just embrace them. So also, when 
social scientific and other reasons are given about drinking you know little bit of alcohol is good little this is there it's there in cough syrup anyway yeah cough syrup you take when you have cough you don't drink every night right you need it peer pressure is there you know others are telling we are considered uncool suppose someone were to give you a bottle of poison and tell don't worry don't kill you immediately it will kill you only after 30 years will we drink no no it will kill you only after 40 years no i am already 40 by 80 i might be dead still i will not drink because somehow i feel i will i live forever we have this in the mahabharata there is an episode when the yaksha asks uh, dharma raja i won't go into that story but basically this one question where he says what is the most surprising thing and yudhishthira says the most surprising thing is day in and day out people are dying and yet those who are living think they'll live forever and they postpone it we postpone it we think ah we can do later we never know when we will when death comes that is why live every day in the presence of swami very inspired by brother sugu recently lost his father yet he is here serving the divine father it takes conviction and true love to be able to do that so uh, yeah i have this thing of taking detours so therefore because swami says we do it whether it is giving up uh, swami had said that if you want to give swami a gift do that so so it doesn't matter i am not talking about rational logical reasoning at all i love swami and swami like this i want to do it for swami so he was talking about his childhood where he found these cigarettes and one anna coin so cigarettes he buried it uh, the beads and then he took that one anna coin and there was one village gambling going on one person you have to predict a number and he look at and he'll shake it's called buda buda kate uh, some local game it is and swami went there and made that one anna into two annas then he made two annas into four annas then he made four into eight and eight into twelve annas and then swami thought yeah twelve annas are enough for three days twelve annas swami thought are enough for three days i can get four dosas and, and his compassion he could have bankrupted that guy there you know <laughs> uh, if he wanted but this is what swami did and swami narrated it the beautiful thing is every time Swami has narrated this incident seven, eight times at least when I have heard. Every time he narrates, he tells Pillal Aramin mean children, I made a mistake. What did I do? I went and gambled. I was like, Swami, you don't need to preface it like that. But every time, the humility of perfection is God. So many things he does perfectly. Everything he does perfectly. Even his humility is so perfect. What is the need to tell that? Every time he'll apologize. He'll tell, I'm sorry, I did the wrong thing. I should not have done. When I used to hear that, I used to get tears. And said, Swami, why Swami? Why do you? Don't know? If I was then, I would never have narrated that only. Why do narrate that? You know? I'm a hero. I'm worshipped. Everybody is worshipping me. Correct? No, it's a mistake. That is the humility. See, it is not that we are able to follow Swami's teachings. We will fail. So, when we, I think we should learn from Swami. His life is His message. Our life should become His message. Yes. Swami tells we should not get angry. I get angry. But when I get angry, I won't tell, you know, I am doing so much good. No problem. Little anger is okay. No, it is not okay. I am failing. I am weak. I am not able to do. I must overcome anger. But just because other things are, I am doing right and I am getting angry doesn't justify anger. So, also I have a weakness. Socially, I drink in order to uh, feel one, one with my friends. Never should we get deluded into thinking, that's okay. After all, I am doing seva, bhajan, everything, I can drink a little. No. I am doing seva and bhajan, that's good. I am drinking, that's bad. At least we should be aware. We should be aware that it is wrong. Never justify a wrong thing. Because Swami himself didn't. The avatar himself said every time, multiple times he has asked sorry for having gambled. That too in that situation, not having food to eat, not having clothes to wear. And there also you stopped, you didn't bankrupt, you didn't go to greed, just stopped at your need. And yet Swami says, I am so sorry. That, that comes from love. How do we explain this love? You know, the first uh, time Swami spoke to me, 
I still remember those words. Swami said, mental hospital. <laughs> Swami called me mental hospital. And I was so happy. Wow, can you believe it? Somebody comes and tells you, you madcap. Swami. <laughs> that is Swami's magic. So many times. In fact, it didn't stop. There was a period of a couple of months when Swami kept calling me mental hospital. Like I will sit in the third line because that's what I managed to get during Darshan. Try to give a letter. So I'm like, hey, mental hospital. Oh, working. Range is good. No, even from third line, Swami is able to. Then from tenth line can Swami see because it feels so special. Professor Kasturi in his book, Loving God, writes about how he came to Swami. I will again not go into that because it's a very long story. But... There is an important person who is the instrument in bringing him to Swami, whose name is Potti Iyer. Now, his name is not Potti Iyer and nobody knows his name. He used to introduce himself as Potti Iyer. What is the meaning of Potti? Iyer is a surname. Potti means dwarf. You know, dwarf. In a derogatory way. Why he used to call himself Potti Iyer? Because he was short. Swami is calling him shorty, dwarf. Look at that, huh? Swami, as if he's giant gone, some giant over there, but Swami is calling somebody potty. And Professor Kasturi is actually first shocked. How is this person, Potty, Mr. Potty Iyer was in his 70s when Professor Kasturi met him. This old man is gone senile, I think. There's some youngster who is one third his age calling him a dwarf and he's so proudly proclaiming it as if he won a title and award from the country. Brother Sugush shared how he would never have taken, forget Allah, Jesus and all, even Narayana he would not have. There is a section of devotees, the Shaivites, never, never tell Vishnu's name. Like that we have Vaishnavites also, we will never tell Shiva. Hey, Krishna is ultimate, hey, Shiva devotee is God no God. Shiva is ultimate, the Narayana devotee is not. So Swami was once invited to speak to these Shiva devotees, all of them. Like, they will apply vibhuti. That too, they will apply it like this horizontal. Because in appearance, also they don't want to put vertical. Vertical is Vishnu. Like, you know, we are perpendicularly different from them. That much they practice. Like that. Uh, in fact, that reminds me in 1973, uh, Mrs. Pankajam, she was the mother in law of a certain Dwarkanath, who is still there in Bangalore, a devotee. He was one of the initial members who founded the Samiti in Bahrain, Manama. She was not a devotee of Swami. So, uh, when he was there, they had been invited to a bhajan bhojan. You know, we often do that with food for the soul. We also give food for the body. Yesterday night, we had a wonderful uh, bhajan bhojan and satsang session at Auntie Nalini's home. Like that it is. So, he was invited like that once and his mother-in-law said, I don't want to come because one is, I don't believe all the Satisai Baba and why I don't like Satisai Baba? Because you said he is Shiva Shakti and they were staunch Vaishnavites. You know? So, she didn't go. She said, I'll stay with the grandson, I'll take care of him, you go have fun and come. That night Swami visited their home. In fact, in the uh, 1974 Sanatan Sarathi or 1973 itself, this incident has been published called Baba and Bahrain. Swami visited her home. Why I am narrating this is, when Mr. Dwarkanath returned back home, he saw his mother-in-law sitting in shock over there. He said, what happened? She had vibhuti on her forehead. He said, what, what happened to you? He said, Baba came. No, he didn't. He said, okay, fine. No, no, how can Baba come? Baba doesn't stay here. No, nobody came. See this vibhuti. And he says, he thought, maybe yeah, vibhuti is there at home. Maybe she would have put. Then she says, listen. Even if I put the vibhuti, will I put it like this? I will put it like this. I am a Vaishnavite. And that is what convinced him. Ah, correct. Then Baba must have come. I am just trying to tell you how staunch they are in their belief. How sometimes staunch leading to rigidity. And there Swami is giving a discourse. And at the end of the discourse, Rosa Kasturi records, Swami sings, Govinda Krishna Jai Gopala Krishna Jai Gopala. And Kasturi, God Swami, no, this is Shaivite. 
sitting like this. But then comes the thunderous clapping. Go in the Krishna. All are following. This is God. This is God. He can call somebody a dwarf and that fellow will feel proud. It's a national award. He'll call another person mental hospital and he feels very proud. He comes to a shy white gathering and tells go in the Krishna and all follow. Why? Swami looks, hey, giraffe, tall person, you know. Just imagine, huh? first time somebody is coming to you, he's tall and they call you, hey, giraffe. Hey, coconut tree. Hey, pakoda. You know? Bonda, like bonda is like an Indian savory snack, round and fat leather. Swami calls bonda. And, you know, afterward, I'll go and tell, hey, bonda. He'll smash and make my nose budgy there, like, you know. Hey, he called him. Swami can call. And what Swami used to call his students? Dunna pota, buffaloes. Hey, buffaloes. <laughs> in fact, I remember when uh, the students were holding a gratitude program, in front of everybody, they said, Swami, uh, by your grace, your blessing, we have acquired knowledge, we have acquired positions in the world, we may be presidents, vice presidents of companies, different positions, posts we hold in different aspects of life. But Swami, the greatest title in our life is Dunna Pota, Buffalo. How, you know, being introduced, how is it? Reminds me, yesterday, as I said, in the Batu cave, went to the Ramayana cave. There I saw Ravana sitting there and there was Hanuman in front sitting on his own tails. So high. Ravana asked, who are you, you monkey? He said, who are you, you monkey? All of us, in our introductions, we tell what work we do, what things we attained, what we achieved. The ideal for us should be Hanuman. What did Hanuman say? He said, Dasoham Kosalendrasya. He said, you know who I am? I am the servant of Rama. My God, I get goosebumps. Look at the way he introduced himself with great pride. He said, I am the servant of Rama. Those who don't know Rama will wonder, what? <laughs> you have crossed the ocean just now with one jump. You can tell, I am the one who crossed with one jump. I am the one with 60,000 followers. No, I am the servant of Rama, he said. Why? That I felt is love is my form. Once that love touches, whatever, doesn't matter what the words are, doesn't matter what the meaning is, we take pride in that because that is Swami's love. What is this love, oh Swami? Your form is that love. I was just go on online and search for what are the characteristics of a handsome man, tall, Muscular. You will see all the physical characteristics. Go and search for the characteristics of a pretty woman. All the characteristics will be there. Physically match that to Swami. None of them he will tick. I mean, from a worldly sense, you cannot say Swami is a handsome man or he is a beautiful woman. But you know what? My Swami is the most beautiful being in this universe. Just the look, everything changes. Why? Because it is not, it is not about the physical form. Because love is his form. It is that love that makes him so attractive. They talk of Lord Sri Rama as Ajanu Bahu. You know what is the meaning of Ajanu Bahu? Often it is translated as tall. Ajanu Bahu means one whose hands come up till his knees. Understood? Hand is coming up to knees. So just imagine like this. So Ajanu Bahu. We sing like that. How? But you know what? Lord Rama is considered. Kumsam Mohana Rupaya means they would say that even men would fall in love with Rama. Not because of his physical form, because of the love he exuded. Because when we look at these uh, things with which we praise the Lord, Ghana Ghana Nila Badana Ati Sundara. We think for Krishna. Ghana Ghana Nila means you are having the complexion of the dark rain cloud. No? Calling him blackie on one hand and then telling Ati Sundara, meaning extremely beautiful. How? How? 
That is what it is. Because it is not about the physical form. It is love is my form. That is the beauty of the Lord. And that is why people have just melted. You experience Swami. After which, let anybody tell anything. Swami, this one is no problem. So much so that if Swami comes and tells Arvind, I must apologize for something. What happened, Swami? I had just got you fooled. I am not God. Swami, you are God. No problem. So much is the heart experience that even if Swami tells I am not God, Swami, you are God. If at all there is God, this is my God, Swami. I don't want. People ask, oh, Premasai, when is Premasai coming? Premasai already came for me. I know only one Sai and he is full of Prema, that is my Prema Sai. I know one Sai who is full of Satya, that is my Satya Sai. Why do we need any other? If we can't benefit from Satya Sai, dear brothers and sisters, rest assured, we can't benefit from any other avatar, any, nothing else can benefit. Because we have a chance, we have the experience, we have everything available. And if we are not able to benefit, no way we will benefit. We have all been lucky, you know. We have won the jackpot. There is this TV game show which says, who will be a millionaire? Who will win a million dollars? They have found that those who win the jackpot, they have traced their life. Less than 10% of them remain millionaires after 5 years. Because they might have won the jackpot, but they don't know how to manage their wealth. On the other hand, people without winning jackpots, those who know how to invest and manage their wealth well, become millionaires. So also, getting to know Swami is like winning the jackpot. That instant millionaire or billionaire status has been conferred on us. But we must know how to cultivate it. Which brings me to the second part. Truth is my breath. Why is love Swami's form? Because Swami's breath is truth. What is this truth? Again in a discourse Swami says, there is Nijam and there is Satyam. In English, Nijam is also translated as truth. Satyam is also translated as truth. But there is a lot of difference. Nijam means 31st August is Malaysian Independence Day. That is Nijam because 70 years back it was not. Correct? 2000 years later, I don't know whether Malaysia will be like this or I don't know. As of now, it is true. Let's take something else. Somebody is the best singer. As of now, that is. Anything that we tell, the temperature, the climate, it's a fact. It is true. I am wearing a white shirt. It is true as of now. Tonight, I don't know what will be the condition. Correct? So, that is Nijam. It changes. Satyam is Trikala Badhyam. Swami would say Trikala Badhyam Satyam, meaning it remains the same in all the three periods of time, past, present or future. Whatever time you make that statement, it is true. That is Satyam. And that is what Swami embodied. Now I have a challenge for you. You can go home and try it out. Try to write five Satyam statements. You will struggle. Anything that we tell is only Nijam. It's all affected by Time, past, present or future. Nothing I can write which is true across time. You know, God is love, love is God. Prema Ishwar hai, Ishwar Prem hai. Ah, that is one. Maybe that is one truth across the three periods of time. That is the truth Swami is speaking about. In fact, Swami himself made this truth very, very clear during a discourse in 1975, the Golden Jubilee birthday celebrations of Bhagwan, where Swami begins by telling, you know, as I said, uh, because it's a short time, I will give the answer itself. I was telling you that we will find it hard to find four statements which are Satyam, right? Swami gave a quotation in which four statements are there, all four are Satyam. Swami said, there is only one caste, the caste of humanity. There is only one language, the language of the heart. There is only one religion, the religion of love. There is only one God, He is omnipresent. But that day in the discourse, Swami said, 
there is only one god he is omnipresent he is satya sai and everybody applauded and then swami says you are applauding because you think of satya sai as this 5 foot 2 inches frame satya shai is satya sai shai means one who is sleeping swami said one who is resting on truth that is satya sai what is this truth what is this truth that swami is embodying what is this truth that is swami's breath because of which love becomes his form swami gave an example swami said see this wall over here see this wall over here ask anybody what is it they will tell it's a solid wall but do you know this wall is made up of atoms swami is telling in the discourse and this atom is having a nucleus with protons and neutrons and it has electrons going around and all of these if you put together they occupy only less than 2% of the space those who have even fifth or sixth grade studied the bohr's model of the atom we know that this is the model that is even now taught in schools and colleges and swami said 98% of the atom is empty space like when you see the sky how you see stars and rest of it is empty space like that the atom is yes so the wall is made 100% of atoms which are 98% empty space but you will not tell this is empty space 98% is rounded to 100% right <laughs> if something is 98% empty space it should be empty space only and swami said yet you will tell that this is a solid wall why because what appears to be the truth and what is the truth are different swami said and then again somewhere in the discourse as he progresses swami says when you sit in a car you tell you are going at an at some speed if you sit in a bullock cart you will tell you are going slow if you are sitting in an aeroplane you will tell you are going very fast but now you will tell you are not moving but do you know everybody knows that the earth is rotating around itself at so many so many miles per hour the earth is going around the sun at so many miles per hour everybody knows it which means we are not simply sitting we are actually moving so fast and yet when we are sitting people tell we are not moving why because what appears to be the truth and what is the truth are different and then towards the end of his discourse swami says in this auditorium are people from so many countries all are one and swami says you will wonder how i am tall she is short i am man it's woman i am from malaysia is from hong kong is from usa is from singapore from australia yes how can it, how can we all be one swami says you are but what appears to be the truth and what is the truth are different it appears like we are all different we are from different castes nationalities different race different uh, genders but all are one this is the truth and then swami said in order to propagate this truth in order to share this truth with the world we have established the satya sai organization the sole goal of the sri satya sai organization is to share this truth that we are all one and because swami embodies that truth every moment of his life that truth is his breath that is how swami has led his life that is how swami leads his life that is why love is his form when we are able to live in that truth our lives also will become full of love we will go into the details of this in the next two talks but there is a hint over here how to get that truth truth is my breath swami says it is there in swami's breath it is there in our breath swami would tell us every time you breathe so hum swami so means i no so means that hum means i swami would say your breath 21600 times every day tells i am that i am that i am that it is telling the truth we are all one we have to be constantly aware of that that is the goal in order to achieve that goal 
we do seva we do bhajans how is it all connected as i said in the future talk i will go into that maybe i'll conclude with one little experience when i was in college i had spent about 4 5 years as swami student in uh, having daily darshan daily bhajans everything and despite all of that i felt that i am not progressing at all i am feeling very stagnant Spirituality, what is this? Swami, I am not growing. So we don't know, right? What does it mean that I am spiritual? Like, do we levitate? <laughs> Will we grow wings and fly? How is self realization like that? I don't know. Like, we just try to we just try to put on the symptoms of self realization and hope that we get self realization, right? So Swami used to make fun of that also. There'll be somebody, some people. Sitting in the first line, and when Swami comes, oh. Swami would say, You are fighting there, jumping and coming and sitting in first line. Now you are closing your eyes, open and see. <laughs> if you want to close your eyes, sit back now. <laughs> Fine. No, there is a significance. Swami would say, Yeah, we are speaking about Batu Caves, Thai Pusam, we are fighting, we go, yeah. We go there, Murga, 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 and then go, Murga. <laughs> you close your eyes here. You fought all the way, yes. But Swami says, The significance of that is, how much ever you struggle, whatever you do, finally you have to see the God within only. Independence, that is the ultimate. So that because, why? Because a time will come when you won't be able to climb those steps up. Your knees will give way. Doesn't mean you can't see your Murga. You can see Murga because Murga is within. Within. We are here to in the quest of God, but everything is a distraction. Everything is a distraction. Let us keep our focus on Swami. So, I was feeling this kind of stagnation and I was thinking, Swami, I am not growing on something I should. Yeah, I am having daily darshan, I am doing bhajan, but can you imagine that? Daily seeing Swami and yet feeling that hey, nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. I am not levitating, I am not elevating, nothing is happening. So, you start reading other, other, other gods, other uh, books, you know. We do that, it's a fashion. Have you read Ramana's book? Have you read Aurobindo's book? Or have we read Satya Sai Speaks? If each one of us were to ask ourselves, there are at least 900 published discourses of Swami and we say Swami's word is Vedas. Oh, pure undistilled Vedas, brother, it's Upanishad. Ah, Swami's word. Those pure undistilled Vedas and Upanishads, how many of us are reading and listening? Per year, how many? Let me go first, about 30 per year. That's all. 30, 365 days are there. Each discourse takes 25 minutes to read, it takes one hour to listen and I do only 30 per year. Pathetic! And you want to read Aurobindo, you want to first finish your own master man, read your own master, read your own God. I will go and listen to Samarpan talks. Why? Because I am thinking it is spirituality, but it is actually entertainment, that's all. Instead of watching a movie, no, I will watch somebody telling a story. That is why we listen to other people's talks more than Swami's discourse. Once in Thrai Vrindavan, Swami told one person, get up and speak this. He said, Swami, please. Swami said, no, no, you speak. And he shared something very beautiful. Again, I don't have time to go into that. But after sharing that, he said, all this Swami only told me. Oh, he said, Swami, you should have spoken. Swami said, no, no, if I speak, they don't have value. They think, ah, Swami keeps it. When Swami had come into Thrai and he was still, he was looking like little sad or God knows what, he was not feeling good. He was wondering what happened to Swami. And Swami said, boys, I am God only now. What is this? God is having doubts. <laughs> he is suffering from a bout of low self-confidence. I am God, no? Yes, Swami! We all shouted together. Come on, Swami, you are God! A ah, little that whole voice no, made him feel all that. Good. So, whatever I am speaking is the truth. No? Like, he is having all these doubts. We tell Swami every word is Veda Vakila. Swami is having that doubt. Whatever I say is truth. No? Yes, Swami! Again we shouted. Now Swami is feeling good. Swami said, Bangaru, dear ones, all of you are God. Oh, I did everything. No, yes, Swami, not there. Just now I told you are God. Just now I told whatever you tell is truth. 
and Swami is telling, you are all God. Something Swami will tell, yeah, some Advaita, some Bhuta Kasha, Chitta Kasha will tell, I don't know. How must Swami be feeling? How Swami must be feeling? You tell I am God, you tell every word is there from my breath, not one grass moves without. I am telling you this is what it is. I am telling you do this. I tell, but once a week alcohol is fine. No? Little chicken is okay. No? God, man, God, everything, truth, every word, breath, Brahma, everything. Parabrahma, Mata, Murga, everything you call me, but how oh, God must be. In fact, I felt that's why one of the last things Swami did before he left his physical frame. Angaru, all my life I am telling you. I am telling you, you are God, you are God, you are God, you are God. You just don't listen. Here, take. I salute all of you. Swami saluted everybody. Nobody believe, man, you are God. You consider me God, right? I am saluting you. I don't care about what people think. No, I don't care at all. I am here. I have come down to your level. To teach you that this is not your level. The descent of God is for the ascent of man. He came down for us. Can't we go up for him? No, we are happy. We will do this only, Swami. That divine pain, Swami says. He would say, Vetuku chunnanu nenu, vetuku chane unnanu. I am searching and searching for a devotee. Dr. Narayana Reddy was sharing an experience where in one of the, in the Tustin Book Center there, when renovation was going on, those workers who were renovating, they said, hey, this person, you know, yeah, your boss, he came, he was supervising. They were shocked, would he? <laughs> he can't come because he doesn't stay here, right? So when Dr. Reddy got the opportunity of an interview with Swami, he told Swami, that Swami, uh, they were all saying that you had come. And Swami just smiled. But Swami all... You know, none of us devotees saw Swami, all non-devotees are seeing. And Swami said, who told you they are non-devotees? What was left unsaid is, who told you you are a devotee? <laughs> oh, yes, I devotees. I wear white and white, I put a vibhuti with water so that it doesn't get wiped out. <laughs> Jai Sai Ram, I tell. How do I tell Sai Ram? Oh, yeah, you know, Sai Ram, Sai Ram, you know. Sai Ram, Sai Ram, hey, Sai Ram, like you know. I bark also like a dog with Sairam. That's an, one way nice it is, but it is not that. It is not that. So there in that uh, time when I was feeling this spiritual stagnation, I thought, Swami, something should happen. What should I do? I started reading other books and I read about how um, Ramana Maharshi, he had this experience when he was thinking, you know, suppose I am dead. I died. Now they'll come and pick my body. And he is going so intensely in that experience of death. Now I need not breathe, but I am still there. Who am I? He keeps thinking, who is that I? And then he gets that enlightenment. Technically, we know the answer. Who am I? I am God. But <laughs> no use of knowing the answer like a parrot. Even parrot will tell. Ram Ram, it tells, you know, in India. There are many parrots. Ram Ram, it will keep telling. It doesn't know what is Ram. <laughs> we should not be like that parrot. Simply parroting. Sai Ram, Sai Ram, without knowing what it is. Uh, once I was sitting in the first line and I saw that a fly came and sat on Swami's feet. I got first line, I fought, I got up in the morning, had bath, everything. And yet I am five meters away from my Lord. And here this fly coming and sitting directly. I thought, oh, blessed fly. My pranams at your feet. Seven generations before and after are redeemed because you are on the Lord's feet. Two seconds later, pigeon does dropping. And the fly goes bzz, and sits on the dropping. Hello, you, you fly. I am only better. At least I know the value of the feet. You don't know the difference between the feet and this. That's what it is. We shouldn't have that yearning and that wanting that. So anyway, I read this and I thought, okay, this death, okay. I'll also try this. Hey, nice. See, Ramana Maharshi got enlightened, right? No, I'll also, I'll also do this. So every night I would do, okay, I'm dead now. So why do I need to breathe? I'm not. I am. So I would hold my breath. And in one month's time, right? I used to do this every day, this sadhana. My breath holding capacity increased from 45 seconds to 1 minute. That's all happened. That's all was the growth I witnessed. I didn't get any enlightenment. I was like, what is this? Man? What? And then, Dasara time in the discourse, Swami begins one discourse. I was like really frustrated. Swami, what is Swami? And Swami starts his discourse with a poem. Pankoleka, meaning without sleeping at night. They hold their, they keep, 
uh, holding their breath and think they will get God like that. I felt he is mocking me. He is mocking me. I said, Swami, don't mock me. Tell me what is the truth. In that discourse, Swami, he, he, in that poem, he sings different ways in which people think they are doing spiritual practice, but they are not. Swami says, there is only one way to realize this truth. See God in everyone. Again, the same truth. Everyone is divine. Thing is, it is so easy to tell Swami, how do we do? Yes, as I said, we will explore that in the future talks. I uh, will just share my experience on that. But the beautiful thing, the punchline is that later on now when I went and visited that discourse, Swami didn't tell Pankoleka. He didn't tell that without sleeping at night. What Swami has actually said is Panileka. Panileka means without any work. Without doing work, they sit closing their eyes and holding breath and think they will get. That is what Swami said. But you know what? Because of whatever that mic fault or the sound system fault, some mistake, I heard it as Pankoleka. He said Panileka, I heard it as Pankoleka. Without work became without sleep for me, but I don't think it's a mistake because the avatar never makes a mistake. Never makes a mistake. Everything is with a purpose. Everything is part of the master plan. Let us have that very firmly etched in the mind. Swami should not have done like this. Oh, this should not have happened. No, it's perfect the way it is because the Lord never makes a mistake. That is our faith. That is the faith we need to have. Then we need to make efforts to recognize this truth. Because when we make that truth our breath, then only our life, our form also will become his love. Then only, you know, when Swami says your life should become my message, our life will be becoming his message when we are able to embody this truth and when we are able to ooze that love that Swami would often ooze that Swami would always ooze. Dear Swami, we have all gathered here, Swami, with our flaws, our mistakes, our pluses, our minuses. But Swami, we love you so much, Swami. You are our life. You are the purpose of our lives. You are the one who gives meaning to our lives. We are so blessed that we just got to know you, Swami. Please use us. In whatever way we are available, Swami, we will ensure that every morning we make ourselves available to you. We don't know what we need to do. We don't know how it should be done. But Swami, our bodies, our minds, our hearts belong to you. We pray that every passing moment, the love that we have for you in our heart should keep growing. Thank you, Swami. Jai Sai Ram.